and returning tonight to Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, Second Corinthians this evening. And we're in Second Corinthians chapter number six. Second Corinthians. And we're in chapter number six. The title that I am putting on God's message this evening it's a matter of time. I want you to think about that title tonight. It's a matter of time. You read in your Bible tonight, in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse number 1, you'll read these words. To everything, to everything, there is a season. To everything there is a season. A time for every purpose under the heaven. You think of those words tonight. A time for every purpose under the heaven. Verse number 2 of Ecclesiastes chapter number 3 says this tonight. A time to be born and a time to die. See, unsaved friend tonight, it's a matter, it's a matter of time tonight. There's a time for every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, yes. But don't forget this to me. There's a time to die. It was the 2nd of December, 1981. I, a young 16-year-old, a young was sitting at the bedside of my dying grandfather. We knew it was coming near the end. And I was determined to sit until the end came. I remember that morning well because Dr. McCord Sr., he, he landed into our home. He was one of these doctors. You didn't have to ring him up. He just landed in. Remember him coming in, up the stairs into the bedroom where we were and examined him and we were put out of the room. We all went downstairs to the living room waiting for the doctor to come down to, to hear what Dr. McCord's verdict was. Remember what he said to my father? He says, Roy, the old man, the old man has come to his journey's end. I remember Daddy asking him, well, Doctor, how long do you give him? Well, he says, it's only a matter of time. We'll give him an hour or two. Dr. McCord was never far wrong when it came to that, you know. You know, friends, tonight, listen. I was sitting in the vestry last Lord's Day evening in Lurgan Baptist Church before the gospel service. And the elder was telling me, the man who was leading the service, he was telling me of a young lad who was buried last Saturday, 41 years of age, 41. And he was sharing with me how many young people around the Lurgan area day young, in recent weeks. And I looked over to the brother, and I said to the brother, I says, between you and me, all I says, between you and me, it's only a matter of time for you, and it's only a matter of time for me. And that's true, friends. It's only a matter of time. 
In fact, yesterday morning, one of the ladies that used to answer the phones for us in my last place of employment, Louise, you called her. Yesterday, she passed away. A lady of my age. I'm telling you, friends, it's only a matter of time. There's one thing man will never do. There's one thing impossible for man to do. You know what's impossible for man through tonight? Stop time. That's one thing man will never do, friends. Man will never stop time. And I'll tell you another thing man will never do. Man will never slow time. You see, it's all just tonight a matter of time. People talk about this. Oh, time comes and goes. Time doesn't come and go at all. People talk about time. Ah, oh, time comes and time... Time doesn't come and go. Time comes, we go. That's the reality about time tonight. Time comes, but it's we that go. You know, I look back over the years and look back to my school days. And when you were at school and you looked around, you had all your classmates, you think, boys up, boys, you know, we have, we have years and years and years to live. I could take you to three graves tonight. The three young men that were at school with me, Paul Stewart's one of them, died at the age of 22. Ralph Armstrong died at the age of 18. Paul Hamilton died at the age of 14. You see, dear friend, you see your life. Your life is like the sand in an egg timer. Every day you live, the sand of time of your life keeps slipping away. And you have seven days left, less to go than you were when you sat in here this night last night. And my former pastor, the late Ivan Thompson, was in, was in the Royal Hospital, Belfast. And when he got the news concerning his condition, one of his friends, Jim Pickering, was in the hospital, and Sylvia, his wife, said to him, Jim, go down and see Ivan for you, something to tell you. Ivan went down to the wee, or Jim went down to the wee sideward where Ivan was, was lying in the bed. And Jim walks in, well, Ivan, what's the verdict? And Ivan turned round, and this is what he said. Jim, the sands of time are sinking. You see, dear friend, tonight, it's a matter of time. When Sir William Russell was being executed and when he walked up the gallows to be hung, he took out his timepiece and lapped the chain around. He gave it to the doctor that was standing in the gallows and he says, that's for you, sir. You hold on to that. I don't need that anymore because it's no longer time for me. It's eternity. I want you to think about that tonight. Because do you see when time finishes, it's eternity. The clock of life is wound but once. And no man hath the power to tell just when the hands will stop. At late. Or early are. That's the matter of time tonight. 
The clock of life is wound just once. And no man hath the power to tell just when the hands will stop at late or early hour. Time is slipping away, friend, and eternity is coming. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 tonight, down at verse 2, we have this text tonight. And because it's a matter of time tonight, here's what God says to us in 2 Corinthians 6 and verse number 2. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted. In the day of salvation have I succored thee. Now here's my text. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Now listen to my text as I read it again. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Do you know what that text involves tonight? That text involves, first of all, urgency. Because it begins with these words, that Behold, behold, now is the accepted time. There's a tragic thought that people think tonight. Do you know the tragic thought that enters many a sinner's mind? That tragic thought is tonight, oh, I have all the time in the world to get saved. I have all the time in the world to get right with God. I have all the time in the world to come to Christ. I have all the time in the world. You don't have all in the time in the world at all, though. The only time you have is the time that you have now. Behold, now is the accepted time. Do you know what's wrong with so many people? They know the gospel inside out. No, that's not what's wrong. There's people in this town, there's people in this land could preach the gospel inside out. They know John 3.16. They know Romans 3.23. They know Romans chapter 6 and 23. They know the gospel inside out. And they know the need to be saved. And they know the need to be born again. But the big problem is, friend, even though they know it, they leave it. It's a dangerous thing to leave it. That's why my text says, it, Behold, now, now is the accepted time. Remember blind Bartimaeus? You'll find him in Luke chapter 18. And it says, the moment he heard Jesus was coming, what did he do? He started to cry out, Jesus of mercy, Jesus of thy son of David, have mercy on me. Bartimaeus didn't say, oh, I'll wait till he gets a wee bit closer. I'll wait till he gets a wee bit near. The moment Bartimaeus heard that Jesus was coming, he began to cry out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Now, why did blind Bartimaeus cry out for? Because he didn't want to miss his chance. Remember Zacchaeus? The day Zacchaeus knew that Jesus was passing through Jericho and passing by his way, the moment he heard, friend, that Jesus was passing his way, Zacchaeus made for the sycamore tree. Why did he make for the sycamore tree? Because he didn't want to miss Jesus as he was passing by. Ah, oh, listen, friends, you don't want to miss Jesus tonight. as he passes you by. There's nothing worse, nothing worse tonight than missing an opportunity for the saving of your soul. Young boy sat in school one day and he heard his RE teacher, who was a saved man, 
Quote the words of Proverbs 23, 26. The words of Proverbs 23, verse 26 says us, My son, give me thine heart. And that wee boy was intrigued by what the RE teacher was saying. And the wee voice inside his head says, Listen, son, your time enough yet, your time enough. Ten years after this, he was a college student. And the college was holding some meetings. And the college, this man got up and he began to preach. <laughs> What was the text he began to preach? Proverbs 23 and verse 26, My son, give me thine heart. And that young man who was now a college student heard God's voice again through the very same text, and again his heart was troubled. And again he heard a voice in his mind saying, Listen, there's time, there's time. That young boy became a college student. He became a statesman. And at a prayer breakfast, they invited a man to come in to speak. And lo and behold, what was the text he preached from? Proverbs 23, 26. My son, give me thine heart. And again he was troubled. And a voice said within his mind that day, listen, go you and travel the world a wee bit before you get this settled. And so he did. He flew to Paris. And while he was in Paris, he took seriously ill. And in Paris, as he lay in the bed, friends, he was troubled, he was agitated so greatly. He cried with his dying breath, I've missed my chance. Three times God spoke to him. Three times he heard the voice saying, there's time, there's time. Unsafe friend tonight, the only time you have is this time. Behold, now. I want you to notice something else about that text tonight. It not only involves urgency, it involves clarity. It's very clear. Behold, now. is the accepted time. This text, in it, this text in it makes one thing absolutely clear. What it makes clear tonight, if you're sitting in this meeting, this could be your one and only time you have. This could be the one and only time God has given to you in that time is now. Behold, now is the accepted time. Now is the time to repent of your sin. Now is the time to seek the Lord. And listen, unsafe friend, it's too great a gamble to gamble with the dice of time. Maybe in recent days, you have been troubled. Maybe in recent days, you have been concerned. In recent days, perhaps, you have been thinking about death. You have been thinking about where you'll be. You have been thinking, perhaps, about God. 
And in recent days, dear friend, you've been thinking about all these things. You're troubled tonight. You're troubled about your soul. And you've been thinking about heaven. And you've been wondering if I die, I'm going to go to heaven. That's a good question to ask yourself tonight. If I die, I'm going to heaven. If I die, I'm going to hell. Good questions to ask yourself tonight, unsafe friend. If I die, I'm going to heaven. If I die, I'm going to hell. And in recent days, you've been thinking like this. Oh, yes. Behold, now is the accepted time. The brethren were holding a gospel mission in the Orter Road in Cookstown in 1945 at the end of the war. Two brethren evangelists were preaching one night, and one, one of the brethren men preached on the great text, Genesis 6 and 3. You know what Genesis 6 and 3 says? My spirit shall not always strive with man. There was a man in the tent that night. That's where the mission was, in a tent in the orator road in Cookstown. And the man who preached on the text, John, Genesis 6 and 3, my spirit shall not always strive with man. Friend, that night God spoke to a man sitting on the second row from the front row. And he was troubled and concerned. And you know what that man did? As he rode in the bicycle home, he got off the bike. And behind the heads there was a great oak tree. And he got down on his knees behind the great oak tree. And this is what he said, Lord, if this is you troubling me, not this time, maybe some other time. And got on his bike. And the more he made his way home, the less the burden got. And that man was never saved. Behold, now is the accepted time. You see, this text tonight involves urgency. It involves tonight not only urgency, it involves clarity. Oh, friend, do you mind Felix in Acts chapter 24 when, he re when Paul reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come? It says Felix trembled. Boys, he was terrified. But even though he was terrified and trembled, what do we read? He said to Paul, go thy way, for this time when I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. And he never did call for him again, because God only gave him one chance. Listen, friends, listen. There is a time we know not when. A point we know not where that seals the destiny of men for glory or despair. There is a line by us unseen that crosses every path, that marks the hidden boundaries between God's mercy and God's wrath. Listen to the text night. Behold, now is the accepted time. Now listen tonight, this verse not only involves tonight urgency, this text not only involves tonight clarity, this text tonight involves eternity. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Did you notice something about this text tonight? It says the same thing twice. Do you know what it says twice? Behold, now. Now, why does this text say this twice? Behold, now. Because this text deals and involves eternity. You know what this text involves? Like? This text involves where you'll be one million years from now. One million years from now. One trillion years from now. You'll either be in heaven. You'll either be in hell. Believe you me, you'll be in one of those two places. 
Behold, now is the day of salvation. Behold, now is the day you need to look to Christ. Behold, now is the day you need to see Him afresh as He hung on Calvary's cross, as He died there for your sin. Behold, now is the day of salvation when you need to come to Him in repentance of your sin. Don't you come whatever way you like. There has to be repentance. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The prophet Hosea said, you know, Hosea preached no different as what I'm preaching. What did Hosea preach? It is time to seek the Lord. Isaiah the prophet preached no different as how I preach. What did Isaiah the prophet preach? Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Don't delay, friend. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. For you don't know, nor I don't know, how soon it will be when we will take our turn in the hearse. Let's pray. O oh God, our Father, we pray tonight that the urgency of this message will grip the hearts of those tonight that are not saved, whether they're in this building or listening at home. Help them to be wise tonight, Lord. Help them to be ways and to seek you now. We leave the eternal issues of this meeting into thy hands. For Christ's sake. Amen. We're going to sing a